Hey guys, welcome back to another Brad and Chloe video. Uh, it's another snowy November night here in Colorado, so we are staying cozy and shoot another video. In this video, we're gonna go in the time machine a little bit, rewind uh, about a year ago, this time of year, to our first DIY project and how we were kind of thrown into the mess of doing DIY work. We really didn't plan to become DIYers that much, but here we are. So with that said, let's go back in time. So we moved into this house back in October 19th, 2019. And we thought, you know, the rooms are pretty much ready to go. We'll just rent the rooms out about two weeks after we move in and it'll be all good to go. The first thing we did was we spackled some of the holes in the wall. The seller left some holes in the wall for us to cover. So uh, thanks for that. Unfortunately, this was not really visible during our final walkthrough because the seller still had pictures in the wall. Anyway, this was a pretty easy fix and a good experience. Okay, now time for the real project, and that is the water damage in the bathroom. The inspector called us out and said there could be water damage, but of course there was no real way of knowing. So as soon as we moved in, we really looked into this, and sure enough, these bottom tiles that were closest to the leak came off super easily like we just took them off by hand it was that easy so basically we just started to take everything apart to see how much damage there was We eventually found out that the leak was from these old three handle valves. The way these work is that when you twist it shut, there is a gasket that is supposed to seal the incoming water from coming in. And over time, this gasket had deteriorated so it could not seal that anymore. And so water was just slowly leaking behind the walls for we don't know how long. We decided to remove the rotten subfloor using a sawzall and after that we were able to get rebuilding we put in a new subfloor using screws and liquid nails which is glue so that the subfloor does not squeak as much on the joists and then we put up some new framing because some of the old framing was rotten and we just wanted to get new wood in there before we close it all up and on this new framing we put the new plumbing next we put in a new ceramic tub uh, this is actually really light and only cost 70 dollars so it was actually relatively easy to put into place After this, we put up the new drywall in the bathroom. Uh, this was water resistant drywall, but looking back, we definitely should have gone with something more waterproof like curdy board or concrete backer. Luckily during that time, we had Chloe's dad in town. So again, another shout out to Chloe's dad, Dave. He really helped us to teach how to tape and mud because to us, that was a completely new concept at the time. And he taught us a lot of great tricks. And I think the biggest lesson we learned from that was that we don't like taping and mudding and we're gonna try to like never do that again and always have someone else do it. But actually it's a great skill to at least know how to do and to know how a good job looks. Instead of taking all the time to put up a tile surround, we just went with a glue up fiberglass surround. Uh, this thing was really easy to install. It's completely waterproof and it looks fine. It's totally functional, it has shelves on it. So we probably saved a lot of time by just going with that. So after we got all the tape and mud done, we painted that area and textured it. And then we left the back of that framing open. We didn't put drywall up yet so that we could test out the shower for a few weeks. So we would take showers and just look for leaks. And after two weeks, we didn't see any leaks. So we decided to put up the, the drywall back there, uh, texture it and paint it. And that was pretty much it. For the bathroom vanity, we basically used the might as well attitude. That is, we already have all this work being done in the bathroom. We might as well do the vanity as well. And I would say this was probably a good decision looking back at the time, it maybe didn't seem like it. So we took out the old vanity, which was in pretty bad condition. A lot of the drawers weren't working and, and it was just beat up in general. The biggest challenge with this was that this space you're looking at is exactly 36 inches wide. And the nominal standard width for a lot of vanities is 36 inches, but that's actually 36 and a half, 36 and a quarter inches wide. And even if it was exactly 36 inches wide, you'd still be trying to force it in that drywall, even with a trim around there. 
it wasn't gonna work. So what we did was got a little creative. We ordered a 33 inch cabinet vanity, put that in there and then filled up the one and a half inches on either side with some, with some trim pieces. And then for the sink, we ordered a custom sink off Amazon. We found it was, I don't know, 35 and a half, 35 and three quarters wide. And then we, we left that sink in and we put that on top, put some silicone on the, on the cabinets, drop it on top, and then we cocked the edges on the side. And then because the dimensions of the sink was kind of weird, we still had a gap in the back. So Chloe had a great idea to put this tile in the back that looks really nice where you can kind of rest your toothbrush or whatever toiletries you have in the bathroom. So there you go. That is basically our inauguration, our initiation into DIY projects for this house hack. Again, we didn't plan it like this. It just kind of happened. Overall, I'd say we're pretty happy with the results. Um, it was definitely stressful doing this after work on nights and weekends, especially when we really wanted to start getting in tenants to pay for the mortgage. But we just had to stay patient and just keep grinding away at it. We made a lot of mistakes and definitely would have done some things differently, but overall, we're really happy with the lessons we learned and we use those skills and that confidence. Uh, you know, we, we carried it forward into more of the projects we did, both hired out and DIY. We're not sure if we really needed to tear everything apart, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a brand new shower and hopefully it should last for a decent amount of time and hopefully not to touch it very soon. All right, guys, that's all I got to say today. I'm hoping to do more of these looking back in time videos of how we kind of got started doing this. There are a few more projects we could mention for sure. Uh, so please let us know if you like them. Signing off from Brad and Chloe. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.